Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. I'm joined by Travis McGee from Futures Animal. Hello. Hello, Joe. Uh, it's good to see you on a you snowy well. morning, on I a know. crisp morning. Staying warm. Indeed. How about you? Yeah. Yeah, you, you get the warm sweater on. You look, I feel great today. Yeah, you Absolutely. look comfy today. Yeah. It's, a, it's an ideal time to, to come inside, talk about finance a little bit. And, of course, over the last couple of days, uh, some the world market's been kind of a little That's crazy. been a little crazy. Right. We've got some... Uh, interesting stuff going on in the world right now yeah you know the, so we thought. talked about last week we've got the issues and the tension in uh, Ukraine and right. um, everything going on with Russia and America yeah. you know going back and forth and trying to figure all that out and that certainly had a little bit of volatility uh, to the market certainly. Um, it's a big time of the year too for uh, key economic data and yeah. not just in the United States but uh, globally and this is a global market now so yesterday we had um, some some major reports coming out of China right as far as how their economy is performing and they were sort of slowing down a yeah bit. and it was yesterday's report was less than stellar yeah. um, and it weighed on the market a little bit uh, yesterday morning the market sold off uh, pretty hard and then bounced back and recovered by the end of the day and we were down slightly but but um, it's just, it's a very data and event driven market right now because there's really yeah. nothing else to base it off of. No, so. this is true. And uh, the other part of the, that too is uh, simply that uh, we've seen, as you said, we've certainly seen a little, little bit of volatility too, but uh, we're at a time of year when, as you said, these numbers come out, we're starting to think about money mm -hmm. a little more than we typically do because we have our taxes due, things like that. So right. people kind of get a little more involved the date, you know, the, the people who typically aren't worried about the market and don't touch it start to think about it a little more, I think, right. at the beginning of the year. So I think it's a little more volatile. The other the other thing uh, I thought was good, the numbers from unemployment were tremendous. Yeah, we had a, we had so a positive jobs report. Um, kind of went two ways. We had more jobs yeah. created, and then right. we had um, a higher unemployment, unemployment rate. But, rate, but you know, yeah. who knows the science behind that? I think everybody tries to figure it out. But I call that level. Bottom line. <laughs> Yeah. This is what I call that. Bottom line, it's, uh, the, the economy is certainly improving. It's yeah. certainly improving. So we have that going for us. So w with an improving economy, naturally, uh, the market, and by the market I mean investors, are going to look for something else to help drive their decisions. And right. lately that has been geopolitical events. There's always going to be something. Um, you know, people are always going to try and find something to, to drive their investments. Sometimes so. they just do things out of matter of, uh, what should we say, almost uh, just doing it over every year, kind yeah. of getting into this habit of doing certain things. And one of them is the May sell-off, which is always a little interesting. People t tend to sell, what is it called? Well, it's, it's, yeah, sell people refer to away. it sell in May and go away. Yeah, um, yeah and that's, uh, that, that's an old adage. And we're, we're, we're nowhere clo close to May uh, yeah, yet. But exactly, but it's something uh, people think about, though, too, is in these times when things are really high like this, that this is the time to jump. Well, that's, that's a great, that's a great uh, point there. Uh, and, and and by and large, one of the most c frequently asked questions that we get is should, especially right now, with m the market, uh, the S&P 500 hitting all-time highs and the media really hammering that on and the, you yeah. know, the nightly programs, uh, should I sell what I have right now uh, and go to all cash? And, and frequently it's, it's the older generation asking that question. Uh, but more and more we're seeing you know, folks in their 40s and you know, even their 30s, you know, they're freaked out. You hear all-time high, and it's very reminiscent of 2006, right. 2007, especially with what we had in the housing market. People look at it, and they say, okay, are we in a bubble? Do I need to go to cash right now? By and large, my answer to that is, is virtually always no. Absolutely not. Um, yeah, because if you, have, if you have your long-term plan in place, you know, people... As seniors should. I mean, that's kind of interesting. You said the seniors are the ones that sell off so often they're the ones that should be the most diversified right well they sh or at they, least reserved they should and, and and their diversification should fit their risk profile right. but you know by and large there's this there's this misconception that you know the investing path looks like this and things are just slowly <laughs> grinding higher and that's never the case no. there's always going to be ups and downs ups and downs but if you ha you have your plan in place you should be able to weather the storm and over time you're going to make more money uh, than you would have otherwise so by going to all cash you're actually putting yourself at an extreme extreme disadvantage and in some cases you're actually harming yourself more than you're doing yourself good when you put that portfolio of cash up against inflation you know it's just sitting there earning you nothing yeah. uh, and it, you, you can't necessarily put it in CDs or uh, savings accounts these days with rates where they're at so um, 
stick to your plan. You know, make sure you have the right plan. If you're concerned about the plan you do have, uh, you need to speak with a professional and see what adjustments you need to make. I suppose that the opposite side of this coin uh, is the recency bias. People, you know, looking at yesterday and think, oh, I've got to get out. You right. know, and as you said, I think uh, that we can certainly agree that regardless of the fact that market drops and has these little uh, edges to it, it's always going, it is always going up as a whole. Well, it, generally speaking, yes, it's always part, yeah. going up as a whole. But, uh, you know, try not to get caught up in the day-to-day -day hoopla around the market. <laughs> you know, the yeah. media likes to make a lot of... Uh, you know, a, a lot of unnecessary excitement around it, uh, gen simply because it's this word all-time high. It's something to talk about. We're at the highest levels we've ever been. Well, theoretically, at some point in time, we're always, always. going to be in an all-time <laughs> exactly. high. Exactly. And if you look at the year-to-date numbers, we're up one and a half percent year-to-date. Not so look a at ton, the, yeah. You know, not a ton. Yes, we had a big year last year. Certainly, we could see a pullback, but it shouldn't affect, again, unless you are a day trader, you're buying positions today and you're looking to sell it today or tomorrow to make a profit, it, by and large, it shouldn't affect your decision all that much. Volatility for a day trader, great thing. Yeah, it's a great thing for a day trader, <laughs> but most of us are not day traders. Exactly. You know, if you were a long-term investor, you know, you're either an investor or you're a day trader. Right. You know, you need to pick which side you're on because your decision and your thought process is completely different uh, w between the two. I've always thought that the word day trader was a misnomer. I thought it should be minute trader because... Well, today's market, That's yeah. what we're really talking about. I mean, they're trading on margins of a tenth of a percent. Right, right. Which is, you know, so thin, but that's what they're doing all day long. So, of course, you know, the hope is that at the other end of that day... It's an absolutely it's, it's an absolute different game than most of us right. are involved in. So, if you have friends out there that are day traders, understand that their mentality is completely different than what your mentality should be as right. far as the market's concerned. Well, let's talk a little more about the uh, you know the educated side of it for a moment, you know, and, and, and try to separate ourselves from those you know from from just uh, being reactionary. What are some of the things that we ought to look at for our long-term plan? Well, I think everybody needs to sit down with their advisor, and if you are genuinely concerned with the market, there are financial products out there now to help you protect your portfolio. No different than a farmer protects the price of their crops, companies uh, protect, uh, protect the price of their materials, so on and so forth. Uh, you have the advantage of futures and options, which are uh, financial tools that can help you protect uh, your portfolio. And if it's something that you you are not um, up to speed on, that you're not very well versed on, right. uh, most of your financial advisors and financial planners, again, I say most, not every, uh, will have some experience in this area it can help guide you in ways that you can hedge and protect uh, your portfolio. But, it's, <clears throat> but aside from that, and something we talk about a lot, you know, don't nece you don't necessarily have to pigeonhole yourself in just the stock market and right. just the bond market. Everybody should be looking at alternative opportunities out there. And again, whether that comes in the form of real estate, commodities, precious metals, whatever the case may be, uh, having a well-balanced and diversified portfolio uh, can be of great advantage to you in helping weather these storms. How does one go about becoming more uh, educated on some of these other tools? Because well, that's I know that there, are, as you said, certainly there are many different financial planners that will right. have some some feeling towards them and understanding of them, but there are certainly those like you who right. consider that ex an expertise. Right, exactly, and that's the great thing about today's world. Everything, virtually everything, is des delivered virtually as far as education. Right. You don't have to go into the old brick and mortar and sit down at the desk with an instructor and have them teach you this stuff. Uh, there's a lot of web-based um, educational programs like ours. We combine ours with the actual brokerage platform uh, because we want educated clients. We want you to know what's going on in your portfolio but there's a lot of education out there. Some comes, uh, some very basic stuff comes in a free format. Uh, others you, you pay a, you know, a modest amount for. Uh, but there is great education uh, online to help you understand uh, risk management, uh, how to build a portfolio, how to manage that portfolio, so on and so forth. Um, it's, it's just such a great world to live in now for the individual retail investor to take control of their own portfolio versus taking all their money, just give it to a financial planner uh, and have them do everything for you. Again, it takes a little bit of time and discipline, right. but if you're willing to do it, you know, just like uh, DIY projects are, you know, <laughs> all the rage now with your home, you know, so can investing. It's the, it's the same concept. 
Yeah, the Im investment improvement company and yeah. uh, Travis McGee right here, right. Futures Animal. That's kind of I, I like that idea. Do you get some new tools? Get get some uh, get some manuals and figure stuff out. Yeah, it's it's, great. it's exactly how it is. All so. right. Well, we certainly appreciate it, Travis Thanks, McGee. Uh, the website is up on the screen right now, futuresanimal.com, and we certainly appreciate it. All right. When we come back, we're going to talk about fly fishing. I know Travis likes to do that too. He's Absolutely. A big skier, fly fisher, all of those things. So am I. Chelsea, unfortunately, she. She got to go out and do this, which I'm a little jealous about. She actually went out and did some ice fishing just recently, and she'll be back with that right after this.